लगे मैम
So good morning students we will continue again with our previous lectures second part which is failures of building and bridge structures. So in a previous figure that is figure 2.4 the relative distribution of reasons for the failures and errors were illustrated. So it is seen the neglected risk and risk treated with false and insufficient measures or waves dominate the picture when all incidents are considered. So it should also be noted that a relatively large part of the failures and errors represent risk which were accepted. So as regards failures and incidents leading to damage caused loss of lives and injuries, these are dominated by neglected risk and risk treated by false measures. So the failures that takes place due to uh, the failures that takes place and which leads to cost damage, loss of lives and injuries. So these failures are dominated by neglected risks. That is risk which, has, risk which has been neglected and risks that are treated by false measures or waste. So in the latter cases, the accepted risks contribute by a clearly smaller percentage. So here, Figure 2.4 is an illustration of the relative distribution of causes of failures and errors by Matosik and Skinder in 1976. These are all cases of failures, the cases of damages and cases with injuries being neglected, wrong measures, neglected and wrong, insufficient measures that took place, accepted risk and the risks that are not known. In figure 2.5, the relative distribution of when in the phases of the project risk were not adequately treated. So it is seen that most of the failures and errors take origin already in the planning and execution phases. So most failures that takes place or the errors that takes place, they first originate from the planning and execution phases only. So the failures and errors with economic consequences predominantly originate in the planning phase and in the failures and errors leading to loss of lives and injuries in the execution phase. So Failures and errors, which has economic effects or results, they are predominantly originated in the planning phase. And the failures and errors, which are lead, which leads to the loss of lives or injuries, are originated from the execution phase. Figure 2.5 is the relative distribution of when in the phases of the project failures and errors originate in the inadequate treatment of risk. Structural damage, cost of damages and injuries, planning, execution, planning and execution usage, and remaining and combinations. In figure 2.6, again, a similar illustration is given based on the numbers from Stewart's and Melchior's 1997. It summarizes the parts of a number of studies of failures and errors in structural, structural engineering. So in figure 2.6, it is seen that the distribution found by Metostek and Skinder 1976 is consistent with other studies. However, it is also seen that a distribution might deviate when specific types of structure such as bridges are considered. This is a figure 2.6 relative distribution of failures and errors in the life phases of building and bridge structures. Utilization and maintenance, construction and planning and design. Sources and the number of failures surveyed by Metosek and Skinder is this bar. Frazek is this bar, Walker, Hedin Prino, Hedin Prino again for bridges and this is for buildings and Eldukar and Ayub. Failures and building, uh, failures of building and bridge structure. So in figure 2.7, the failures and errors originates in inadequate treatment of risk during the planning phase as considered in more details here. So it is seen that concept and structural analysis in general contribute the most when failures and errors leading to economic consequences are considered. Structural analysis always dominates when failures and errors takes place. So, however, in relation to failures and errors leading to loss of lives and injuries, we have seen that also work preparation also plays a very important point. Illustration of the distribution of the phases during planning where risks were inadequately treated. Metosik and Skinder, all observed cases, cost of the damages and cases with injuries, concept of the failure, structural analysis, drawings, work preparation and combinations. 
So it is interesting to investigate how the failures and errors which may be attributed to accepted risk and human errors contribute to the total sum of damages. So failures and errors are contributes to the total cost of damages and also the total number of injuries and losses of lives and also the total number of failures and errors respectively. So this as a whole is illustrated in figure 2.8 where the number of damage cases, cost of damages and injuries for accepted risk and human errors are shown. So this is an illustration for the total number of injuries and loss of lives, economic consequences, and total number of failures and errors attributed to accepted risk and human errors respectively. So in figure 2.9, the distribution of causes of the failures and errors is illustrated. It is seen that ignorance and insufficient knowledge are the most important contribution to failures and errors. So those having insufficient knowledge and ignorance, these are the basic or main important contributions or causes for failures and errors. It is followed by causes as underestimation of effects, failing to remember incorrect transfer responsibility and simply not knowing. This is distribution of reasons why failures and errors occur by Metosek and Skindred 1976. Mainly insufficient knowledge, underestimation of effects is 14%, inefficient knowledge is insufficient knowledge is 27%, ignorance is 37%, errors forgotten is 10%, incorrect transfer of responsibility is 6% and did not know, like no idea is 5%. Finally, in figure 3, this one, it is illustrated whether and how the failures and errors might have been avoided. So figure 3 shows how failures and errors could have been or might have been avoided or controlled. From this figure, it is evident that control is one of the most important risk treatment measures, a fact which is generally realized by most engineers, but unfortunately not fully appreciated. So control is one of the most important risk treatment measures or ways. This is realized by most engineers, but it is not fully appreciated. So often control is considered an obstruction of the routines of the daily work. Control acts as an obstruction for daily work routine. However, normal care or precaution also plays an important role. So it is seen that a smaller part of the failures and errors is actually unavoidable, thus the potential for improvement is large. So this is an illustration for relative distribution of risk treatment measures which might have circumvented the failures and errors or controlled the failures and errors. 55% of control was needed, 13% is unavoidable, and 32% is normal care and precautions should have been taken. So that's all for this lecture. You can give your attendance now in the chat box. Thank you.